Good job us again, everyone. It's great to see those that have gathered here in the Bark Sanctuary and to know that so many of you are watching as we begin a new Jewish, excuse me, a new year, a new secular year of 2021. Years ago, on the onset of World War II, there were 60,000 Jews who were living in a small town called Thessaloniki, Greece. It was a living and vibrant Jewish community of those 60,000 Jews. And most of the porters in this port city in Greece were Jews. So many that that port was closed on the Sabbath. Hitler, may his name be erased, took Greece by storm towards the beginning of the war to secure his southern wing before launching Operation Barbarossa and the offensive against the Soviet Union. Soon of the 60,000 Jews who lived in that village, 50,000 were murdered in the concentration camp of Birkenau. Few, of course, survived, but one Jewish family, the Borlas, miraculously survived the war. They were able to hide and escape the Nazis. And in 1961, a son was born to this family, and his name was Albert. And Albert grew up and studied veterinary medicine, and he received his doctorate in reproductive biotechnology. At age 34, he moved here to the United States, and he married a Jewish woman named Miriam, and they had two children. In the United States, Borla was integrated into the medical industry, and he progressed very quickly and joined the Pfizer company, where he held the position of head of the global vaccine department. From, the rare, from there, the road is short for his appointment as CEO of Pfizer back in 2019. Throughout this past year, Albert Borla, a Jew, a descendant of Holocaust survivors from a town in Greece, led the company's efforts to find a vaccine for the coronavirus. The vaccine that will save the lives of millions of people around the world was in many parts led by a son of Holocaust survivors. And what may be even more miraculous is in order to develop the first vaccine in the Western world, Borla took a $2 billion gamble to have Pfizer partner with a German company named BioNTech to use their revolutionary mRNA technology to develop that first vaccine in a record amount of time. Less than a century later, a second generation survivor working with a German company to save millions of lives. I begin with this story tonight to remind us, yes, it's been a difficult year. No one was sad to say goodbye to 2020. And I don't have to tell you about the losses we have all suffered. But tonight on this beginning of 2021, on this Shabbat, I want to remind us all that as difficult as this past year has been, there's been some incredible miracles. Just a few weeks ago, we finished our holiday of miracles, Hanukkah. And the Babylonian Talmud describes, describes Hanukkah when it says a miracle occurred and they lit the menorah from the single undefiled crude of oil for eight days. And the next year, a year later, the sages instituted those days and made them a holiday with recitation of Hallel and special thanksgiving and prayer and blessings describing the holiday of Hanukkah. Now why the next year? Why did it take a year for the rabbis to institute a holiday based on a miracle that had already happened? In that moment, the miracle was known to us why did the rabbis wait a year to declare the day celebrated and distinct and holy? Is it because when we experience a miracle, do we know that it is happening in the moment? Sometimes do we need perspective away from the event to celebrate the greatness? Tonight I'm here to remind us all that we have all witnessed an incredible miracle. The Pfizer vaccine was first given on Hanukkah. Perhaps that wasn't a coincidence. 
Rabbi Danny Landis of the Pardes Institute in Jerusalem reminds us that we as Jews have always been commanded not to rely on miracles. The rabbis go to great lengths in the Talmud to tell us that no matter how good we are, no matter how righteous we may be, no matter how many mitzvot we may follow, don't rely on a miracle. With the famous statement that even the most righteous people should not walk by palm trees on a windy day. Don't depend on miracles, they tell us. But Hanukkah, Rabbi Landis reminds us, is the only time that we can ask for a miracle to save us. My friends, we asked, and a miracle was delivered. We were told that it would take years, that most vaccines take decades, that at the minimum it would be two to four years, but probably longer, to the first vaccine could be developed, a vaccine that we could trust. But it took less than a year. And based on evidence that I, you know, you've heard it from the clinical trials, that Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine was 95% effective at preventing COVID-19. Most vaccines would dream about having such a high effective rate. The normal flu vaccine that you and I get every fall, or we should get every fall, normally is around 65% effective. But that Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna one that was approved just a few weeks later is close to 95% effective. Yes, my friends, there are going to be issues with distribution. You're already hearing about it. You see it on the news. We read about it every day. Israel is one of the few countries that's doing it right. In less than two weeks, they've already vaccinated a tenth of their population. Already a million Israelis have received the vaccine, more than Americans. There are going to be problems. We are a big country. With many ways, our healthcare system is far from perfect. And it will take time, even those who are the elderly amongst us, even those with pre-existing conditions, it may take months till you get that vaccine. But let not the delays, let not those delays make us forget what a miracle we have witnessed. There is a vaccine available. There are two vaccines available and more are coming. And that miracle soon will allow us to return to a normal speed of life. Let us not lose sight that we have truly witnessed a miracle. A second miracle we have just witnessed. Despite the predictions of violence, fighting, and protests, our country conducted a peaceful and orderly election. And so far, there's been no substantial violence. The American system has worked its magic. There are not riots in the streets. People are not burning down buildings. If I would have told you six months ago that this election would pass with no major episodes of violence, that more Americans than ever would vote, that there would be no fraud, that this would be a fair election, you would have said, Rabbi, you're dreaming. There's going to be problems. I'm not even sure it's safe to go to an election booth. But no, it's worked. Yes, we're still very divided, more divided than perhaps we've been in decades. Unfortunately, the extremes on both sides have seemed to take over the mainstream and we hear too much from those extremes. But the reality is, as this election showed again, that most of us are right in the middle. Most of us are even keeled. Most of us believe in the American democracy. Most of us don't believe conspiracy theories. Most of us simply want to live good, innocent American lives. Most of us believe the truth. And despite the pressures, our democracy still works and works well. And most Americans believe in that democracy still. Maybe that's a miracle based on everything we were told would happen. Peace reigns on our streets in this difficult and contentious time. The third miracle that you and I have just witnessed over the last several months, our beloved Jewish homeland, the state of Israel, 
has made historic agreements with four Arab nations, the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, Morocco. These historic agreements mark the first normalization of relations between Israel and an Arab country since 1994 when Israel made an agreement with its neighbor Jordan. Credit goes to the Trump administration, to the Netanyahu administration, and to some visionary leaders in the Arab world. And there have been no negative consequences from these historic agreements. Thousands of Israelis have flocked to these countries, to the UAE and Bahrain, over the last several weeks. 50,000 Israelis have visited the UAE and Bahrain, and nothing bad has happened. You and I can now go despite any Israeli stamps in our passports. If you're an Israeli, you can go now. They visited Israel too. Can we recognize this goodness? Can we be grateful? If I would have told you just a few months ago that Israel would have agreements with the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco, and more were sure to come, who knows what the next weeks and months may announce for us. It's astonishing what is now happening before our eyes. For decades, we were told that Israel could never make more peace until the Palestinian question was solved. And despite the fact that Palestinian leaders year after year failed to make peace with Israel, despite how much Israel has been willing to give up, Arab countries are finally had enough with the Palestinians' rejection of recognizing a Jewish state. Not just Arab countries. Many remember a time when countries like India were against Israel. Today, Israel and India enjoy flourishing relations. Even Turkey, under the Islamist Erewhon, is starting to change its tune. Just a few weeks ago, Israel made and established other relations with another country. You probably didn't even hear about it. But with a small country tucked away in Asia named Bhutan, the Himalayan nation only has relations with 54 countries in the world. Israel became the 54th country it too decided to make relations with. More and more countries, more and more people, even in the Arab world, are finally realizing it's a losing strategy to be against the Jewish state. But it's a very visionary strategy to make relations with a great country like Israel. We have witnessed a miracle. Yes, despite how difficult 2020 was, and the beginning of this year will be, let us not forget that we have witnessed some incredible miracles that you never would have believed could have happened just a few short months ago. We have vaccines, and soon all of us will be vaccinated. There's been peace on our streets despite how divided we are. And Israel has relations with so many more Arab countries than we ever thought and ever believed could be possible, and more are coming. I believe at some point this year, Saudi Arabia and other countries will also establish open relations with Medinat Yisrael. 2020, let us not lose our ability to see the miracles that still exist. Because too often, I believe that so many of us have. Abraham Joshua Heschel, one of the great 20th century Jewish theologians and rabbinical leaders, never, ever lost the ability to see miracles. He often wrote of the power of wonder, awe, and radical amazement. He spoke about the miracle of everyday life. And he believed in the miracle of all the small things and large things around us. And in explaining his philosophy of living, the great Heschel once said, quote, Our goal as Jews should be to live life in radical amazement. To get up in the morning, to look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted, to say everything is phenomenal, everything is incredible, never to treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. As we begin a new year, can we abandon our world-weary cynicism, our pessimism, 
our doubts, and allow our eyes to be open to the miracles that do surround us. That's my New Year's resolution for 2021. Shabbat Shalom.